you guys everything is finally here now I can start building up this motor and there's a lot of parts I mean you're looking at probably I mean it's about fifteen hundred dollars sixteen hundred dollars worth of parts here uh, just to get the whole thing running right so I'm just gonna run through them real quick because you'll see them on some of the installs but uh, let's start with the hot rods crank went with that 11 to 1 Wysoko pistons got the which one is this the counterbalance bearing kit the water pump rebuild kit that's actually a really good deal all around that gives you everything you need and the seal to go along with that of course the billet water pump propeller a new fuel pump for whenever I do the uh, fuel pump <laughs> The S camshaft here, this is an OEM S camshaft. It was just too much to risk on uh, trying to trust everyone else. So I went with that. Of course the lifters, I always do that sealed or replace the plastic one to keep from warping. The Wix fuel filter. All new OEM seals, main seals. That's the main bearings right there. The uh, main bearing set from hot rods was just a little too expensive for what it was so i just went it was cheaper to go with oem if you were buying in bulk on some of this other stuff full gasket set kit but i'm still good this is the the weiss Co. kit so i'm gonna use that uh top end gasket set this little thing right here is uh that time and key advancement that i was talking about that's what i got the two degree they say uh each degree is like two horsepower who knows we'll see but uh, that's bike man performance they made it look a whole lot bigger in the in the picture that's it. Kind of expensive for what it is. So I'm pressing in all the new seals, main seals, crankcase seals for the cover here. And when to go do the water pump. And this was the tool that, I mean, it's not even a tool, it's a socket. I don't even remember what size or point. One and five sixteenths. And just kind of ground it away on the outside to have it fit into this hole. Don't, I didn't really like that. So even now where I'm at, where I'll be able to press it, this is the bearing that came out of one of those clutches that I rebuilt. Or just took apart so that's the just the roller bearing it's not the one way the side there with the bigger lip on it will fit perfectly over that water pump seal and not damage anything and it fits the lip of it perfectly and the tolerance is so much better it's gonna be perfect just be able to press that in be good to go we're gonna move on to the cam and everything else but I mean that silicone line is perfect not too crazy not too much just enough all around so here's a little bit better shot of the hot rods crank also it's definitely a beefier right there and they use those brass bushings there's a shot in the motor everything is spinning wonderfully the counterbalance there it's new bearings seal and the new seal and everything on this side so like so we're gonna do the um, the cam real quick I I originally thought that I had a slight issue with the cam just due to I, I laid both of this one and the old one uh, the old ones back over there but the old one the dot is right here or the hole is right here for the alignment on make sure I can see it the alignment on that that will go in there and mesh up which when I thought like I said the old one was here the new ones on this side so when I clock this over I figured I would have to you know readjust the gear rephase it or retime it so but no apparently not apparently the flat part does not matter I was focusing too much on the flat part don't do that because also when you put this dot to where the factory one was which is about one o'clock all the lobes are the same which then in return your timing mark which right there will be the same. So don't sweat over it like I did. I thought I had a whole lot more than I actually did. Let's go ahead and throw this cam in. The dowel 
for the oil pressure relief before I put in the oil pump. That's all it is. There's just a dowel in there and a spring. So, I mean, I, I kind of lightly, lightly, um, not even sanded, it was, it was like a scotch bright pad just to kind of make sure that there's no burrs in there. Everything does pull in and out with the magnet very nicely. So all I'm gonna do to install that, take some oil. Put it in the hole there. There is a beveled edge and a non beveled that goes down. Spring and your bolt. That's about all there is to it. On the 800s and everything, right. See if I can make sure I see it. Right there is a port. That's where you also prime up your motor after you get done assembling it. Right there, I'm going to be adding a oil pressure gauge. This is this motor. This bike's going to have an oil pressure gauge. It's going to have a water temp gauge and a voltmeter. All that I'm going to do custom on it. But that's where I'm going to tie into it. So I'll be able to monitor that sticking if it does high pressure, low pressure, everything. But that's all there is to doing that oil pressure relief. Okay, so for the oil pump, on the manual though, they show like a whole glob of assembly lube on there. I just put a little bit of oil in there to pr help prime it, and a little bit of assembly lube just to help hold the, the rotors there. And there is a torque sequence to this, so. Okay, so the reason why I stopped was just because uh, this gear right here for the water pump was not pressed on all the way. There needs to be, I mean, that's kind of what I was going on. I wasn't sure how much to press it on because my press felt like it was pressed on, but now with the, this one can move back and forth a little bit, you know, so it, that one's pressed on and now I have no binding anywhere and this one is pushed and the cam is pushed in all the way. No binding there, no binding here. So, I mean, I, I mean like I said, <laughs> this press is still new, you know, so whatever, but just make sure the thing's pressed on all the way until it does stop. It felt like it stopped the first time. No, but you do need to have, I don't know, was that about a quarter inch gap right there? But don't go by that, go by until it doesn't go. We're all good now. Now we can start installing that back in. Okay, so just torque down the oil pump in sequence. It goes one, two, three, and four. On the sequence, put it on real nice and tight. You can, if you listen close, you can actually hear it pumping. And if you listen even closer, you can hear it storming outside. We got a huge storm coming through right now. No big deal, not really worried about it. The lights are flickering some. So if uh, anything happens that I don't make it, then my 10, 10 million subscriber can have the Sportsman. If they finish it, really at that point, I don't think I'll care. So you can have it. But uh, yeah, still making progress and not stopping. I want to do this gear, that gear, put it all back together. Things going great. So these two bolts here have to be torqued to 22 foot-pounds plus or minus 2 foot-pounds. Now there's, I don't have the holder for it and this probably isn't the ideal way but I took a extension, put some tape around the two spots where it would meet the crank or the connecting rods, put it through there, put a towel on each end to protect the surface here and I mean 22 foot-pounds isn't that much so it was just enough to hold it and uh, yeah I got those two torqued now, everything's fine, nothing's scratched, nothing's gouged, we're good. Now I can back on the cover and I don't know if I mentioned this already but the way to line up these two gears because the spring in there that needs this thing needs to be uh, clock counter counterclockwise a little bit so the way I did it I took two flat blade screwdrivers put them in there and then as you push them in there and turn them it'll line up and then with one of them I kind of pried and torqued a little bit to where these lined up and then pushed on the rest of the way there's supposed to be like a little dowel tool that you push in there and it lines it up the screwdrivers work beautifully.